Hi, a project I've been working on is uh, this uh, track control system made by a company in Germany called Uhlenbrock. And uh, what they do is they sell these uh, little tiles with uh, these plastic covers and stuff. They're basically they're circuit boards. You can see these ones are, uh, there's a kit of two boards. And what you do is you plug them to, to each other and you end up making uh, uh, the basic uses to make your track plan of your layout. But these boards, they run about, uh, some Some of them are $15 each, $20 each. The throttle is, I think it comes out to about $100. So if you end up making your whole layout, it ends up being very, uh, the board becomes very big and it uh, becomes very expensive. In my case, I started off with, uh, I ended up using from MGP, uh, some, some of their uh, panel decoder boards and I used two boards and I ended up designing this uh, panel with these uh, and I get all my information in here but uh, one of the things I wanted to do is have maybe strategically placed around the layout some of these components in this case here this is a throttle and uh, this little board here is a um, our um, local net connection so a local net connection comes in it supplies power and all your boards you can expand this to as big as you want and uh, so it plugs into the uh, this is a throttle <clears throat> you select the address, you press local, you type in the digital address, press local again, and now you can run your locomotives. So if you wanted to have one of these with a little local net uh, connector like this, anywhere on the layout, uh, then go ahead and uh, you can run your locomotives. Uh, the other thing uh, that, I, that they have is this LCD screen over here, this guy, four character LCD screen, and that will uh, report uh, the address of the locomotive I think the direction and a little bit of some other information. But uh, the problem is uh, what uh, this company Ullenbrock did is they, they have, they're using the local net protocol, but then they're adding some of their own uh, code in there, which uh, doesn't make it very compatible uh, with the you know existing uh, software and hardware. So um, just to give you an example is that that board is, uh, gets information from a, uh, what they call a LISI, uh, transmitter and uh, that's a uh, in the track it's an infrared LED uh, that shines up through the track and that's sending some information about uh, the track and then uh, when the locomotive uh, goes over the track on the bottom you have to install a little printed circuit board underneath the locomotive that has a little LEDs that flash the information of uh, the locomotive and when it covers or goes over the uh, <clears throat> the detector the infrared LED in the track then that information is sent to uh, the Uhlenbrock hardware. In this case, it'll send, send it to this display and it'll show you the information. But for N scale, those little decoders that you put underneath, you have to physically glue them underneath the la underneath the locomotive and wire them up. That's, uh, that's not good. Maybe in a larger scales, that's better, but not in N scale. Uh, so then the other thing is they ended up, uh, Uhlenbrock came out with a, a a receiver called uh, Marco and that one is ba based on Railcom so now instead of having the pr printer circuit board glued underneath the bottom of the locomotive and have the proper clearance the you can use a, uh, a locomotive that has a built-in uh, Railcom information and then that little transmitter will send the uh, the local net information and it's using basically the local net but the local net Uhlenbrock protocol and then it talks to to this guy and gives it the information. Now, my problem is I don't have the, for my command station, I'm using a ESU uh, a ECOS command station. And uh, so my problem is that I'm using block detector, instead of using the Marco block detector, I'm using um, DigiKai's uh, DR5088 Railcom detectors. So like in my yard, each one of these tracks is connected to a, a, a it's a real, it's the rail comma where uh, blocks. So as I, uh, you see, I have a display here. If I uh, put a, a locomotive in a track, oh, see it says locomotive 56 is in zone one. I move it somewhere else, zone five. See as I'm moving the locomotive. But the thing is I wanted it, I want to be able to talk to this decoder. So, uh, or this display. Now the display has a little switch on it. You press the button and you you tell it what block it's gonna basically re, uh, reference. So in this case, uh, my it's my first block here, and I have a locomotive there. And now what I'm gonna do is when I take the locomotive, remove it off the track. 
put it on the track. The display shows the address of the locomotive, 2421. If I remove the locomotive, it clears back to zero. So now the thing is, is how did I get that going? Because again, as I said before, the Ullenbrock uh, protocol with Loconet, it's a little bit uh, different that the system doesn't understand. So uh, the, the person who came to the rescue was uh, Hans Tanner, IOTT uh, software. Uh, and his little um, ESP32 boards. And so you see down here, I have what? Uh, let's see the display. This might be too bright. But basically, I'm, I'm connected uh, the IOTT stick here with a Loconet uh, adapter. And now, what that guy is doing is he's intercepting that Ulenbrock information and he's converting it so that it could uh, show on this display. So uh, thank you very much, Hans, for uh, making that work for me. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.